So a lot of you guys had questions about this frog drying I uploaded only a few days ago. Um, it looks as if the frog is three-dimensional and it's obvious that it's actually two-dimensional as you can see. It's, um, it's a flat piece of paper, there's no folds in it whatsoever. Uh, scissors were used to cut the frog out, but that's the only thing other than a pencil. Um, so I've seen this done before and uh, I wasn't I, I understood somewhat the concept, but I had to develop my own method for doing this. And, and what it really is, is an elongated image drawn so that when you lay it down, it'll actually shorten the elongation and, and look three-dimensional. Now, some of you might wonder, so how do you know exactly how much to elongate and, and how do you actually plan that out? So that's the hard part. That's the process I I had to sort of devise. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some of the tips and tricks and the process on how I did that. So the process I used was uh, I would I would take the picture that I wanted to make 3D, and I chose this one for the sake of this example, and open it up in Photoshop. Um, and what I'm gonna do is is stretch it the way I want it in Photoshop and then draw it on a piece of paper the way it's stretched on the computer. So the way I figured out how I wanted it stretched was um, as you can see on this picture, this chess piece, I chose this because it's probably about the easiest possible image to do this effect with. And that's because you have to begin by drawing an, uh, a rectangle as if it's on the surface of where you want your three-dimensional object to sit. So, for example, with that frog, uh, I had to draw a rectangle as if the rectangle was the paper that the frog was sitting on. Now, here's an example. As you can see, the chess piece is sitting on a rectangle that's already there. So I can actually use that, and um, that's what makes this picture so easy to use. So I'll draw the, the rectangle in the shape that I want it, as if the chess piece is sitting upon it. And then I'll draw a diagonal from the left corner to the right corner of that diamond that I just drew and I'll rotate the image to where the diagonal is perfectly horizontal. Now you can use turn on the grid function of Photoshop and then line up that horizontal line with one of the grid lines and that's how you make it perfect. Uh, this is where um, paint wasn't able to do this because when paint you can only rotate 90 degrees at a time you can't rotate um, freely like this so uh, after you do that, what you do is you um, transform the image and you scale it so that you compress it on the axis of that horizontal line. So like this, you'll grab the right side of the image and, and squeeze the image until the four angle, the angles pointed towards you, is perfectly right, as in perfectly 90 degrees. Now the way to check that is hold up a piece of paper to the to your actual screen and use the corner of the paper to make sure that that angle is 90 degrees and so once that front angle is 90 degrees uh, you'll be sure that that this is exactly how you want to draw your image now um, from here you'll want to use the the grid function once again of Photoshop and grid off the image now there's a well-known process in the art world where you grid off the image and then grid off the paper and you just uh, translate the the members of the grid from the original image to the grid on your paper and then erase the grid lines when you're finished. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. I'm sure there's lots of YouTube videos out there about it. Um, if you guys like my style of teaching, I'm sure I could make a video about that. Um, let me know if you want to see that. But basically you grid both of them and you transfer the image and you're gonna shade it as precisely as you can. Now when you're when you're shading your design one thing you really really want to focus on is the shadow. The shadow is gonna be a huge factor in making this thing look realistic. So um, this image is actually probably not the best one to use. If you can find an image that actually has um, a really a really dark crisp shadow or even take your own picture for that matter um, that would help a lot. So you want to. You're definitely going to want to sketch your your shadow along with the rest of the drawing when you do the grid. 
So now you have this chess piece sitting on a piece of paper like this. And uh, as you remember, the frog that I drew, it was actually cut out around the edges of the frog in such a way that it looked like the frog was on a much smaller piece of paper. And the process for doing that is actually extremely simple. Um, as you can see, if you look at the picture straight on, your, your piece of paper is actually a perfect rectangle. So if you just cut off um, a, a length of any side just like this, I mean, you can, you can make the square smaller. It's really pretty simple. So um, basically, you can, you can apply this concept to any kind of, of perspective drawing. I mean, this is about the most basic possible idea you can do. Um, I'll be most likely uploading more art in the future, um, doing a lot more in-depth and um, detailed drawings in this fashion. So if you guys want to keep in touch with me and check out some of my new work, you can check out my Facebook page, which is Carbon Handprint Designs, and I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, here's just a couple final notes. Uh, you may be you may know that Photoshop's extremely expensive, and um, you can opt out and do the 30-day free trial, which is what I'm on right now. So uh, there's other options. And also, um, when you're when you're taking pictures of your finished work, you're going to want to take a lot of pictures because it's it's one perfect angle that it'll look realistic. So oftentimes, if you just take one or two pictures, uh, you're going to notice that it's not real that's not quite perfect so take a lot of pictures and thumb through and find the one that looks the most realistic and lastly this uh, this concept may have been done before this way um, I, I learned this on my own but that being said um, this has probably been done before the same way so um, I won't take full credit for it and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video